If you are offering supported advice to women who are breastfeeding, it's vital that you have a solid understanding of breastfeeding physiology. How else can you reassure women that the breast and the baby regulate milk supply, or how their breasts are never truly empty? The following animation aims to provide you with current, evidence-based information that explains how breast milk is produced and maintained. The interaction of the hormones responsible for breast milk production and maintenance is demonstrated through animated characters who will be introduced to you now. Prolactin, a hormone secreted by the anterior pituitary gland. Oxytocin, a hormone secreted by the posterior pituitary gland. Feedback inhibitor of lactation, a locally produced whey protein in the breast, prefers to be called fill. Progesterone, this hormone is produced in the placenta. Estrogen, also produced in the placenta. Human placental lactogen, produced in the placenta. Don't forget insulin and cortisol. They support hormones required for milk synthesis. Pregnancy. Estrogen and progesterone are responsible for the development of the duct system. Here we see prolactin transforming the mammary epithelial cells into lactocytes. From 12 weeks, there is a colostrum-like secretion in the lactocytes. And from the second trimester, colostrum is present. This is defined as lactogenesis 1. If the presence of high concentrations of prolactin stimulates milk production, why does the breast not produce copious amounts of milk in pregnancy? Progesterone suppresses the target cell response to prolactin. So, in the presence of progesterone, milk production is suppressed. Estrogen is also a prolactin antagonist. HPL occupies the lactogenic receptors in late pregnancy. Birth to 48 hours. With the birth of the baby in placenta comes a significant change in hormone levels. The most influential is the rapid fall of progesterone to baseline by 48 hours which liberates prolactin. Prolactin, in the presence of insulin and cortisol, is now able to influence the secretory activity of the lactocytes, and milk production begins. Milk production slowly increases from around 30 hours until 48 to 72 hours. Women become aware of an increase in milk supply, described as the milk coming in. HPL levels fall within hours, while estrogen levels fall to baseline by day five. If no breast stimulation occurs, prolactin levels begin to fall and are basal by day 14. During a feed. During a breastfeed, nipple stimulation, either by the infant feeding or manual expression, causes the anterior pituitary gland to increase prolactin secretion and the posterior pituitary gland to release oxytocin. An increase in prolactin stimulates an increase in milk secretion in the breast. The oxytocin response to nipple stimulation has a local effect on the myoepithelial cells of the breast, causing them to contract and eject milk down the ducts and out through the nipple. The oxytocin release is pulsatile in nature, with each surge lasting 20 to 60 seconds, with multiple surges each feed. Prolactin levels begin to fall 30 minutes after the feed has been completed. So given that we know that prolactin levels remain elevated even between feeds, why doesn't the breast keep continuing to produce milk at a constant rate? Do you remember Phil? The feedback inhibitor of lactation. Phil is a whey protein that exerts a concentration-dependent autocrine inhibition on milk secretion. When milk storage levels become high, Phil concentrations are also high. This triggers a downregulation of milk production and protects the breast from continuing to overfill. 
week two. Over time, the local mechanisms in the breast regulate milk supply. These are dependent on regular milk removal for day-to-day -day regulation. This is known as supply and demand. The baby is becoming more efficient at milk removal and the breasts are no longer overfilled, unless the baby sleeps unusually long periods or a feed is missed. Prolactin remains important, but baseline levels decrease over time. It's the surges of prolactin that occur during feeds, rather than the baseline levels, that influence continued milk production. Oxytocin remains important for effective milk removal throughout lactation. As each feed progresses, fill decreases and prolactin increases. This re-establishes milk synthesis at an increased rate to replace the depleted stores. Hormonal influences during lactation. Events can occur during lactation that may prompt you to question the hormonal interplay. Consider these two events, the mini pill and pregnancy. This doesn't influence established lactation as the functional lactating breast has no active progesterone binding sites. While there may be some impact on supply early in the pregnancy, the supply demand or autocrine control maintains the supply. Suppression of lactation. When the regular removal of milk ceases, the hormonal feedback to the brain also ceases, resulting in a down-regulation of milk production. Along with the influence of fill on the undrained breast, milk production reduces and finally ceases. In the absence of prolactin, progesterone and estrogen re-engage their influence and the menstrual cycle begins again. The length of time women remain amenorrheic due to lactation is varied, with some women recommencing the menstrual cycle while lactation continues.